in prayer, it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Today on Manna from Heaven, we continue the teaching on prayer. And I pray you've been following and learning and receiving from the Lord. And my friend, Mr. Brock, yes, sir. again, is with me. I, you know, honestly, I love having you with me. Thank you, you are such a joy. You're very kind. And I love teaching the Word. And I enjoy having a wonderful man of God sitting here next and to me. And I love to hear you teach it. Thank you. Saints, we have been talking about something so very important, prayer. Now, quickly again, Luke 11, 1, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. The disciples said, teach us to pray, Lord. And prayer is so important to you and I that I'm going to take the next few programs and continue teaching on how to pray. But first, remember that prayerlessness is a sin. And prayerlessness started as the result of the fall of men. 1 Samuel 12, 23 says it's a sin. Genesis 3 says that prayerlessness began as the result of the fall of man. So we have to confess that sin. Yield to God, surrender to God, and then we begin developing a life of prayer. And I pray on this program, you've learned much already. But now we're going to continue. The Lord Jesus said, that when you pray, enter into your closet. So on the program today, I want to deal with the right location of prayer, the right position of prayer, and the right condition of prayer. Before we get into that, would you be so kind, unless somebody missed what you said in the opening of the program? You mean when About today? the heart. Well, yeah. You know, in, in, in Psalm 80, verse 18, the Word of God says, quicken me and I will call upon thy name. It is, it is really impossible to pray properly and effectively till the heart is touched. Till the heart. Yeah. So in prayer, it is better to have a heart without words mm. than words without a heart. Mm. Yes. Because prayer is not just repeating words. Prayer has got to come from the heart. But remember, prayer is born by the Spirit. And it is impossible, I want to say something here, very important. It is impossible to be prayerless if the Holy Ghost is present. Absolutely. Because He is the Spirit of prayer. And where He is, prayer is. And it will be that prayer from the heart. Now, what do you mean when you say the heart? Are you talking the about spirit. the attitude of the no, person? the spirit of man. The spirit of man. Yeah. And in Jeremiah 30, 21, let's just read that again because I did yesterday and I got to do it again today because this is so important. We understand that you and I cannot pray till God draws us, till mm -hmm. God, uh, God's Spirit will touch us. In Jeremiah 30, verse 21, it says the next uh, portion of the verse, And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. I will cause him to draw near, and then he will approach. You cannot approach God till he will draw you near. And remember that uh, the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4, it says, draw us, draw me, Lord, then we're going to run after you. So you, you cannot begin to pray till God touches your heart to pray. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's just all words. It's just you. God has nothing to do with it. Is it as much our benefit as it is a benefit to Him? Okay, now you've, you've, you've asked a very, very powerful question. God has, uh, has given you and I the power to restrict heaven or release heaven. Wow. Think about that. That's strong. Our, our prayerlessness will restrict heaven. Movements in heaven are, are, are controlled by movements in your heart mm. through prayer. Right. You see, God will plan to do something. And I'm going to show you scriptures on this. Now, maybe not on the program today, but for sure tomorrow. God will, will, will say, I'm going to do this. But then he waits and looks for someone to pray it to come to pass. Wow. Prophecy is fulfilled only in prayer. When God through Jeremiah said that he would restore Israel after 70 years of captivity, he waited till Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah and then prayed. And when Daniel, the 
prophet prayed, then God fulfilled his promise. God is always looking for that intercessor, for that someone or more than one to agree with his plan mm -hmm. to bring it about. So it's not necessarily a situation where God is just wanting us to be there. No, no, no. Him. He made He's us partners. He's making things happen because we pray. Look, look. God in His amazing wisdom and grace has ordained that you and that precious you people be His partners. Mm. And He said He will do nothing without you. Wow. God will not do it without you. Get this in your head. God will not do it without you. Cannot you, do it without you. No, 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 no. He will not do it without you. Wow. It's his decision not to. You cannot do it without him. Right. But he will not do it without you. Mm. Now, you, you need to write that down. I wasn't planning on saying that, but it's true. That's so powerful. We cannot do it without him. He <clears throat> will not do it without us. So we are the he, ones that causes... The, 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 the catalyst. We are the one. We are the, we are the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. That God moves through. Man, now, dear Lord, help us to pray. Yeah, it's our fault. To, to, much of what's happened, the delay of blessings is the church's fault. Mm. The church is responsible for what happens on earth. God's plan That's or heavy. the devil's plan. That's I, heavy. I'm saying it again. If we do not pray... The devil is given permission to fulfill his plan. Mm, mm. When we pray, we give God a vehicle to use us to fulfill his plan. What do you think happened with Amalek? What did Moses have to do for God's plan to be fulfilled in defeating Amalek? He prayed. Right. And what does it say? When his arms went down, mm -hmm. Amalek prevailed. Right. In other words, when he could no longer pray, Amalek, but as long as he prayed and they held up his arms, and at times we need people to help us. That's why agreement is so important. Yes. Because sometimes out of weakness, my God, I feel that only time. Amen. Out of weakness, you and I will, will quit praying. You and I will quit praying. That's why we must have someone to stand with us in agreement. But God has ordained yes. that He will do nothing mm. without you. Think about that. <laughs> I now, am. I'm definitely yeah. thinking about it. Now, the Lord said <clears throat> that we must enter into our closet. So let's begin talking about the right location. All right? Can we turn to Exodus 33, precious saints? Exodus 33, beginning at verse 7 to 11. And, and here we see something very, very important. Moses understood the right location. Now, when, when I say the right location, I do not mean physical. You must be alone with God. That's your location. Right location doesn't mean an address. Why? Why do I have to be alone with God? Why? I can't talk with God in a crowd? or uh, That's not what I said. Alone with God means your heart is in communion. This is true. Yeah, alone with God, you could be with a million people and be alone with God. Mm -hmm. But it helps us human beings to be alone, away from people. from people. That's why Jesus went to the mountain. Right. That's why Moses entered into the tabernacle. Right. Uh, that's why the Lord said, enter into your closet in Matthew 6. Mm -hmm. Now, in Exodus 33, beginning at verse 7, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, without the camp. He wanted to be away from the, from the crowd. Right. Yeah, and do you know why? Because the crowds will distract you. It's not that you can't be alone. It's just more trouble to sure. be alone. Sure. It, it's distraction. Is it a mind thing? Is it just... Well, we, we human beings cannot really focus on prayer with people screaming all, all sure, <laughs> around sure, us and sure. the dogs barking. Right, Please. right. I agree. Yeah. It says without the camp... Afar off from the camp. Now, this is key. Afar off. He did not want to hear the noise of the camp. Right. And I love that. Afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Now, the Holy Spirit made it so clear to re 
emphasize it was outside the camp. It, it, it was not a part of the activity of the people of Israel. It was away from noise, away from distraction. Mm -hmm. It came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. Now, as he entered in, it says, and it came to pass as Moses entered in, the cloudy pillar descended wow. and stood at the door of the... Now, it's amazing. The pillar did not come. The presence of God did not fall until he was there alone. Mm -hmm. If you want the presence of God on you, precious saints, you've got to be alone with the Lord. It's just so important to understand. We must be alone with God. And that is the right location. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Now watch this. Now this is very important. You can worship from afar, but you can't pray from afar. Mm -hmm. You missed what I just said. No, I, I got it, but I want you to expound on that. People can worship God in a crowd. Yeah. But they can't be intimate till they're alone. I can worship God in church. Yeah. I can worship God in a crusade. Yeah. But if I want to pray. They worship from afar. I want to be alone. But if you want to commune with the Lord, if you, you must really be alone. Wanna, if you really want to get your w point look, across. Look, worship does not demand a special location. You can worship in the crowd. Right. You cannot pray effectively in the crowd. Jesus went to the mountain. Right. Moses went into the tabernacle. Right. The Lord said in Matthew 6, 6, enter into your closet. Have time alone with God. Yeah, we, we surely can be alone with people around us. But is it that easy? No, it's not easy. No. So make it easier for yourself. Sure. To be more effective in prayer. Be really alone, alone. then. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that Israel worshiped from afar, but Moses communed near. Mm, yes. So you can worship in a crowd, but you can't commune. With and worship a... itself is not prayer. No, it's not. What it's is, it's a, it's a, uh, it's the result of prayer. Prayer will will it's the birth, response of prayer. It will birth worship absolutely. Yeah, and we will talk about that of course later. Now, the location is very important. Now I want to say something else. The position. Now this is this is probably one of the most um, important things that, that 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 I can I can talk about. Now, I'm assuming you're not talking about standing or kneeling no, no, or anything no, of that, no, right? No, no. I'm talking about under the blood. Mm. The right position is under the blood. You must come to the cross to be heard. Wow. <laughs> That's strong. Glory to God. That's powerful. Yeah. And Moses understood that because in Numbers chapter 7, would you turn to it? Number, yes. and please, precious people, 7, Numbers 7, verse 89 and Leviticus 16, 14, and 15. Now, this is awesome information I'm giving you. Numbers awesome. what, please? Numbers chapter 7, verse 89. Now, here you see that Moses came to the right location. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, that he heard the voice of one speaking unto him, from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony, from between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him. He heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat. Hmm. That's where the blood is. Yeah. On the mercy seat. Right. So the blood is present. Wow. You must be where the cross is. You must be where the blood is. We enter through the blood. The position is under the blood. Covered by the blood. Absolutely. Otherwise, God will not hear you. Now, that is what the Bible teaches. So, right location, alone with God. Right position, under the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, would you mind reading uh, Leviticus 16, Verse, uh, verse 14 and verse 15, please. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock 
sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat yeah. eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is, for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So where was the blood? On the mercy seat. Ah, that's the whole point. But the important thing here is it's under the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. You cannot pray effectively until you are at the cross. God won't hear you. It says we, we, we come through the blood in Hebrews. Now, thirdly, the right condition. you got to have the right condition to pray effectively and be heard. Uh, Psalm 51, verse 17. In fact, I'm going to give you a number of scriptures. Psalm 51, 17. Psalm 51, 6. Psalm 145, 18 and 19. And Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. You so know, let's just begin. You know I don't have that good of a memory. <laughs> but it's okay, I'll remind you. Yes, sir. Okay, Psalm 51, 17, and then I'll read Psalm 51, 6. And precious people of God, this is such important information I'm giving you. You know, we talk about prayer, the, how we need to pray. But often we, we, we fail because we will not wait upon the Lord. Now remember what, what I said yesterday. Wait till God touches your heart. Do what Psalm 80 verse 18 declares. Do what Jeremiah 30, 21 says. Wait till God will touch you. When he does, your heart will become ready. And now you can pray effectively. It won't just be words. It will be born by the Spirit. And now when, when you pray, you can get alone with God easily that He's touched your heart now. Once He's touched your heart, there's no struggle to find yeah. that place alone. Oh, definitely. Once He's touched your heart, you will come to the cross. And once He's touched your heart, the conditions will be right. So go ahead, sir. Psalm 51, please. The sacrifices of God are of are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, heart O oh God. O oh God. Thou will not, thou despise. Will not despise. So God is looking for a broken heart, not a proud heart. You, you, God's not going to hear you if, you if you if you enter in boastfully. And mm -hmm. look what it says here in Psalm 51, verse 6. I love this. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Mm -hmm. So God is looking for truth within. And now Psalm 145, 18 and 19, please. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him. Yeah, to all that call upon Him in truth. Yeah. Keep, he will fulfill going. the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Yeah. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon Him in truth. It's from the heart. Mm -hmm. Only the heart can pray truth. Right. So the condition of the heart is important to God. So not only your location alone with God, not only your position under the blood, mm -hmm. but now your condition. What is your heart like when you pray? Mm -hmm. You know, remember I said earlier, it's better to have a heart without words sure. than words with, without a heart. God is looking at the heart. Is that heart praying? And mm -hmm. born by the Spirit, it will be the heart. So when it is the Holy Ghost, if the Spirit of God is present in your life, there will be prayer from the heart. But if the Holy Spirit is absent, there will be prayer from the mind. Mm. And it will just be words right. and the, no results. Only heart prayer will touch heaven. So it is imperative for us to have... To wait. It's imperative to wait upon the Lord until He touches you. Otherwise, you're just wasting your, your, your So when your I time. enter into prayer, I want to say, Holy Spirit, I'm here to pray. Help me to pray just wait and for touch yeah, me. Exactly. Isaiah 66 is another magnificent portion. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, verse 1, The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? He, he was talking about the house of prayer. Yeah, yeah. And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Wow. So he says, 
He says, okay, you built me this great house, yeah. the house of prayer. But where really is the house of prayer? I'm looking for that heart that trembles at my word. Mm. That's, the, that's the true house of prayer. Isn't that powerful? You're, you're too, too quiet here. Well, I'm, 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 I, well, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. no, no, no. But I, I, I would want to say this to you. You know, Jesus himself said, my house shall be called in house of prayer. Yeah. He, he and rebuked them for selling and buying. That's what I'm saying. That, yeah. But they had gotten into the routine. There was no heart. Yeah. It was the motion they were God going through. God looks at the heart. You know, here's Just, a dove, here's a bullock, yeah. take it in there Remember and that offer. God looks at the heart. Now, tomorrow I'm going to continue. And tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about something that is really powerful besides the right uh, uh, location and the position and the con condition. I'm going to talk about uh, who does God hear. Hmm. Very important program tomorrow. Who Don't miss God? it.